morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is John with Tommy's Top Picks here to bring you your weekly flesh and blood market update. Let's go! It's a quieter week, not a quieter week, a colder week than it was last week. Last week was an all-time record of quietness. We never had a week so quiet in the history of my tracking. This week, it's not quiet. It's cold. It's getting cold. It's getting icy. This is pretty standard. Uh, we're just a few weeks uh, is it even weeks? It might even day, be days at this point away from the spoiler season for Dust Till Dawn. The absolute minimal hype level for older stuff is happening right now. Maximum sell pressure for people trying to get capital uh, so that they can buy Dust Till Dawn staples and things of that nature is happening at this very moment. And we're starting to see it reflected in prices across the board. What does that mean? buying opportunity it's not financial advice but when everyone's selling that's when i like to be buying and uh, this looks like a pretty good opportunity so let's jump in and talk through the boxes first unlimited boxes only one of note is tales of aria unlimited is down 8.06 percent to 57 dollars uh not unusual to see these kind of dips we've been here only a few weeks ago right so nothing crazy there and we had that spike so this is just reversion to the mean nothing special there uh, moving on to first edition boxes, WTR 8.14% down to 4500 uh, This is on TCG Player. I'm pretty sure you can get this for a better price on a Discord, etc. Um, pretty sure I saw 3000 sell. Maybe three, five, three, yeah, 3,500 maybe? Yeah, I think so. Um, on a Discord group or Facebook group uh, not so long ago. So I think it is possible to get lower prices. Obviously, TCG players are a little biased uh, to the fees and the taxes and the shipping and all that stuff. Uh, versus in person with people that are recommended. Definitely check your sources. There are scams going around. Uh, the big channel opened up a scam notice board so you can go check to see an email if it has been associated with a scam in the past so um, just check who you're do dealing with if you're going to do a discord type deal uh, arc on the other hand is up 8.86 percent not really sure why um, actually when i looked into this i dug, dug a little deeper uh, no sale happened at this price so this just got pulled down and replaced with this so it's really like it never really moved. Um, this is just people messing around with things, and that's kind of how it goes uh, with pricing based on list price. Moving on to crew, uh, first edition boxes down 9.24% to 501 from 552, which was a cooling off from the 608. So it's worth noting that we are still declining on crew. We said we were going to keep an eye on this because this 885 went way too high, and I think we're going to end up colliding back down at our low. That's just what happens when it goes too fast. Uh, fly into the sun like Icarus. Lose your wings. All right, Mon first edition down 5.65% to 117 from 124. Um, this is a decline. It's kind of unfortunate. I thought the hype from dusk till dawn would keep this up, but it seems like it is low now. Uh, so this might be a deal. This might be a steal. With dusk till dawn coming, light card shadow cards are going to be in demand. Uh, some of those coal foils because some of them will not be replaced. Some of them will, obviously, but some of them won't be. So I think if you want to take the safest bet, not financial advice, but your safest bet uh, for a Dust Till Dawn kind of investment it is actually a Mon first edition sealed box, in my opinion, because you got the coal foil opportunity in there. Uh, you have the cards that are from the previous set, and then um, that you have the fact that they're going to be coming off of shelves for the event, right? The, the launch event. So as far as it goes, it's the mutual fund of shadow light and what's coming up. Um, you, no guarantees, obviously, and you can pick and choose and maybe find the right card that just spikes and booms based on what we know there's a few things that people are speculating on obviously um but i think the whole box is a, a very good bet and that's uh kind of where i am on it um moving down to first edition cases crew is at negative 9.66 percent 2800 again no sales in this range really so it's just the price leaking down uh, it is pretty low, though. I'd say this is in that discount range. We talked about this back when 2000 was the discount range way back a few months ago. Um, I think since we saw this increase up to 4000 kind of range, that 2800 is pretty much the discount range and below. Uh, maybe wait a minute or two. It's been coming down steadily. Uh, but the reality is, I think, once we get back into another hype cycle, another market, 
Um, and then again, another competitive season crew will jump up once again. So that said, it is one of the first three and it is a very expensive case. So, you know, you do what's right for you and your financial stability. Uh, and we continue to chug along with dust till dawn. I'll keep these prices going and then we'll, uh, we'll identify where the, uh, the start of the process is. All right. I want to talk about some cards. All right. So what I did was I went through all of these, um, this is essentially Marvels and Fables, which I consider collectibles. Since the market is cold, now is a good time to buy many, many things. Uh, so first off, I want to review the uh, Drakai, Emperor Drakai of Asir. Uh, it is 851. I think I misspoke, or maybe I wasn't quite sure what I was coming to the conclusion of, because I was thinking on the fly there about, um, well, I know I misspoke about the number of boxes. I said 10,000 boxes, and it's 10,000 packs. I got corrections on that in the comments. Thank you, guys. Please always comment and correct me when I say something incorrect. Um, but the concept was how many are there versus some of these other things and how expensive they are. In particular, I was comparing it to gold foil commons, which we know there's only a hundred of. Uh, my thought is that there's more than a hundred of these and the price should reflect that, which in my opinion, um, and now that I've thought about it a lot more than rather on the fly, um, my opinion is that this price should come down. Now, that said, supply demand does not always dictate price, unlike your economics 101 pre professor told you. Um, sometimes you have price stickiness from price memory. You have the psychology around something that was considered precious for a very long time. People just aren't willing to let go of it for lower prices. Um, there's a lot of reasons that this may never come further down. Uh, that said, it is the only Marvel I don't own, and I'm very tempted to buy it lower than this, but at some point. Um, so I think because it spiked so high to begin with, and to be fair, we did have, uh, what, two months ago? Yeah three months ago, three months ago now, a thousand dollar sale. And then this month, an 850 sale. So I think it should be lower than 850, honestly, based on supply, based on what we're seeing with the gold foils and what they're going for. Um, but it is also the emperor. It's a special jewel and it was meant to be a special jewel. So, and it's gorgeous. I mean, look at that art. It's fantastic, right? Uh, so that said, uh, 850 may be where its low ever is, and then it just climbs from here as the next set happens. I'm going to wait. If I miss it, I originally decided I was going to miss it, so I do not have a strong feeling. Like the Angel I always wanted, this one, I was like, I just will never buy that card. It just isn't something I'm going to own, right? And so I don't feel so strongly about this one if I miss it, if it goes up. Um, but the data seems to indicate that it should probably be cheaper than it is uh, based on what we're seeing with gold foils and the gold foil commons that are 100 each. And we know it's 100 each, guaranteed. Um, this is nuts. Command and Conquer is 1450 Now, this is a list price, but the last sold was 900 The one before that was 900 And then a month ago, basically, 790 And there's only three listed. This is it. This is it. We've hit the, the crazy point for this, this card. Um, I mean, it's very playable, obviously. It's gorgeous. It's a fable. Um, I don't think it counts as a marvel. It's just a fable. Um, and you'd play three of them if you're going to play them? I don't know if people are playing these. I would hope not. Uh, but the point is that this has jumped dramatically, you know, over 50% in, uh, in a couple of weeks, in a month, basically. Um, so... If you have them and you want to sell it for a thousand dollars or something, uh, now might be the time because we're seeing the big spike up. That said, let's talk about things that are a discount. Uh, Tommy and I went over Heart of Fane Dale playable 384. It's come down from its highs, very, very uh, reasonable price. It may go a little lower, but don't expect it to stay low forever. It's just one of those cards that people will want to have in their collection. Uh, 380 is a fairly good price. Library is down. I don't see this as being a playable, um, but if you do want it just to have the Fable, because the Fables do eventually go up, it might be worth grabbing the Rainbow Foil at this price. Obviously, the Coal Foil is around that 500 price. It may even be 400 now, but point being, the, uh, the Coal Foil is the real value holder, and it is still much higher, so keep that in mind. We are talking about the Rainbow Foil, which is typically the playable. Uh, Soraya 525, stable as can be. It's been there forever. Um, it did go up for a little bit, but it came right back down. And then the uh, codexes are about the same place they've been. I think this codex of frailty has leaked down a little bit. Uh, I think it was up at the 300 range for a bit and then slowly came down. I is still probably overpriced. 
Blood of Drakai we talked about in uh, Tommy in my session of cards. The dragons are pretty stable. And uh, the thing that I thought was interesting, Icelander's cheap. And where is it? Oh, sorry, it's page two. Oh, look at that. The Hanabi came down. Of course it came down right after I bought it. Uh, <laughs> it always happens. Um, these are all stable and low. Uh, this is the only one that popped with uh, Vincette. And these baby dragons are all stable and low. And I imagine uh, they will stay that way at $13 Marvel. I imagine they will stay that way for a while. So there's no rush on these. But this is the sort of thing that you might think, hey, as this set becomes more and more boring, these prices continue to decay. Might be worth picking up a few of them because they are marvels, uh, they are rare, they are collector pieces, and the dragons are gorgeous for sure, and they're playable for the most part. Um, but they'll be available. Um, so I think this is one of those times where it's like, oh, the market's ignoring this thing. It might be the right time to start looking at it a little closely. Um, I've now picked up, like I said, I have every marvel except for the emperor at this point. Um, and I have every Fable and at least Rainbow Foil and all the modern ones, this and beyond, in Cold Foil. Um, so I am not looking for any pickups here, just full disclosure. Uh, so you can trust that I'm not, like, trying to pump something. I mean, I guess I'm pumping the things I own, but not really. They're down. I'm saying it's a discount. It's a pretty decent time to buy, in my opinion. Um, I will probably buy some. I'm not sure what yet. I'll have to think about which things. I'm very tempted on the heart. I am somewhat tempted on the Emperor if it comes down. Uh, everything else, I think, it might be the dragons. They might be the thing I go for because they're so pretty. They're so good looking. Anyways, handsome dragons. All right, let's get on to some charts. Uh, WTR Unlimited is boring. Arc is up slightly boring. Crew, nothing worth remarking on. We kind of know this. Uh, Mon, flat as a rock. That's crazy how flat that is. Premium is intact. Tales of Aria, uh, flat as a rock as well. Box price is way down, premium intact. All right, yeah, unlimited, it's kind of boring. I cannot wait for the day we can cut unlimited, but you know the second it starts to get to that point, another thing is gonna shoot up to the next level and then we'll be very interested in this chart, so that's why we keep on it. Uh, WTR, obviously, ARC, obviously, these are kind of artificial, even though they don't really have that much supply in the market. Crew is the one we were talking about. Yeah, we're still drifting down, so you got to keep an eye on this one. If it falls below this level, this is where we were talking about that 2200, I guess. I said 2000, but it's 2200 range. Uh, if it falls below this range, you're talking about retracing deeply. Um, I'd be surprised if it found itself there, uh, but I could see it finding itself back at that level, not below it necessarily, like bouncing off of that level. Um, that seems to be the direction we're heading, but I would not... I would not count on it. Don't wait until it's all the way down and say, oh, I'm, I'm just going to wait till it drops below because it's definitely doing it. And things have this tendency to get hyped again and, and pop back up. Uh, you do see that the premium is tracking with the downward pressure of the box. Now, on the box level, we've already hit that previous because these were at the same time. You see what I'm talking about here? Um, so we have now hit at the box level. So the box are driving this market uh, trend here. It's interesting. If, this, if the box drops below 500... Keep an eye out because I think we're going to come in for a harder time on crew. That's what happens when you get these big spikes. The market has to correct and it tends to overcorrect. Uh, Monarch is a slow glide down, much healthier, even though this climbed pretty fast. By comparison, if you do the percentage growth, um, it, it didn't. But um, that's why that's why it's important to understand percentages and not just absolute numbers because this scale is different. Um, so anyways, sliding down, gliding down, as we say, uh, it is below this 550 range. So I think we're going to look for a new low. If we get down to five, uh, 450 before, or rather while dust till dawn is happening, I will be shocked. I will be absolutely shocked. Um, premium still intact, much tighter, obviously. Moving on to the Brontosaurus. The Brontosaurus has gotten completely jacked up and looks nothing like a Brontosaurus anymore. <laughs> um, that's okay. Ste steady state, steady state, no premium. Everfest, will we ever see first edition? I mean, sorry, uh, unlimited edition? Probably not. I hope not. Uh, you do have an ARV opportunity of like a dollar, I think. No, two dollars. Nothing special there. Uprising. Yeah, there's a 
six dollar premium there or a uh, herb opportunity on uprising it's really weird how uprising behaving these days it's just so low i guess they have a lot of supply um the waves worked but i think there's just still more than there is demand overall so they they're sitting in that's driving the market down over time and then we again have an arb opportunity this one's uh eleven dollars that's pretty good for dynasty outsiders is down and an arb opportunity hmm. 2.0 all have arb opportunity that is interesting we're gonna have to keep track of that going forward i want to I'm going to keep that close to heart, how 2.0 has been behaving post, you know, hype bubble and all that stuff. I think we're seeing a, uh, a downward reflection, maybe a bit too much supply in the system. Well, that is it for this time. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you do, hit like, subscribe, all those things. Otherwise, I will see you next time. I hope you're out there cracking packs and playing games and enjoying this hobby that we love. Have a good one.